Happy Easter. I hope you're all able to celebrate with your families and I hope you remember the reason why we celebrate Easter. It's not about the Easter Bunny and the Easter egg hunts, even though I know those are fun. Really, it's about the story of Jesus and how he conquered death. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later in the video. But just to give you a little update on what I've been trying to do to keep busy, I've been working on a lot of school, just like I'm sure most of you guys are, but I've also been watching my little niece and here's a picture of her. Ah. She's so much fun to watch. Now I want you guys to send me pictures of how you guys have been keeping busy because I'm curious on what you guys are doing. First, for this week, we're going to do shout outs. So our first shout out is to Nazareth. She completed the challenge that Coach Grace gave you guys last week to learn a new skill and she baked a cake and she sent me a nice video. I'm also going to shout out Belin and Ella who got the top scores on the Kahoot game from last week. Way to go guys, keep it up. And now here are Coach Grace and Coach Clarissa. reads, O Sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and earth by your strong hand and powerful arm. Nothing is too hard for you. So God created Mount Care. He gave us the snow. He created that dog that you saw and we should praise him for that because you can create a dog. That's incredible. In conclusion, God can do anything. So trust him and you'll be set for life. I'm going to share a hallelujah moment with you guys. So once upon a time, I went to science camp with my class and we were separated into groups and the assignment was to take pictures of animals and plants and stuff. And my group was kind of not the best. It was me and two other guys and we did not all get along very well. And I was freaking out. I remember crying in my bunk because we had no pictures of any animals and I lost my chapstick, which was devastating. But the next day God provided and you know what happened? I found my chapstick and I took a picture of a chipmunk and life was good. So praise the Lord. Hey girls, okay, so this video, I'm gonna be showing you girls some things that you can do around the house to help out. The first one we're gonna do is laundry, okay? So I don't know if some of you girls do your own laundry or whatever, or if your parents do it, but this week, I wanna challenge you girls to do it by yourselves. So I'm gonna show you what I do personally for my house, but that may be different from yours, so make sure you double check with your parents before you just hop into it because I don't want to get you girls in trouble. So first, I have a hamper, my beautiful hamper, it says Paris on it. First thing, you wanna separate your darks and your lights or your whites. If you have bright colors or light colors, I guess, you can do like your white and beige and then like your colors and then your darks. So I'm gonna do my darks. For your darks, you're gonna wash in cold. So for this, I do cold and I always do heavy and then I always do delicates. That's what I do personally. I press start. My start button is right there. Some people do it differently, but I, I put my water in and tied and then I put my clothes in after. This is the powder. This is for my lights or whites. And this is the liquid, like, tidy. I'm gonna use the liquid for my darks. If you have a lot of laundry, then you have to put a lot more. Now I'm gonna wait a little bit because I want it to like fill up and I want the soap and water to mix. And then I will be putting my clothes and stuff in. Uh, I think it's right now, so I'm gonna put my stuff in. Hey girlies, okay, so we're back for the next part. So now I'm gonna be transferring my clothes from the washer, washer to the dryer. And then you just put all the clothes in there. Once you put all your things in, I always use one dryer sheet and just like throw it in. Then you close it, turn it off. 
return the thing for my lawn. I got my laundry out of the dryer. I'm just gonna fold my laundry. I'm not gonna show you girls exactly how I fold because I mean, you girls can fold by yourselves. If you really do need help, you can probably ask your parents, but I hope you girls take this challenge and I hope you girls help out around the house this week. So yeah, we wanna see, see pictures of you girls, of course. Love you all and miss you all so, so much. We cannot wait to see you girls. Please, please, please send us pictures. Hey girls, hope you're all having a great Easter Sunday. Today, we're gonna continue the story that we've been working on for the past couple of weeks. And so we're gonna start right from where we left off in the last story. So if you remember, Jesus has just died on the cross. What happens next in the story is that Roman soldiers, who are the people that actually carried out their crucifixion, take Jesus off of the cross and they bury him in a tomb which one of Jesus' followers had offered to give to him. And so when they bury him in the tomb, they roll a huge stone over the entrance. So this might be a foreign concept to you guys, but when we die, we get buried usually under the ground in like a plot of land. But during Jesus' time, they would usually bury people in tombs. So if you could think of like a really big cave that you put the body in and then you seal the cave's entrance with a huge stone. And so that's how Jesus was buried. He was put into a cave-like tomb and then there was a big stone that was rolled across the entrance. And this was a stone that would take multiple people to remove or to reclose. So it wasn't something that anyone could just push around. It was really heavy and it was really big. And so Jesus was buried in that tomb for three days. I'm actually filming this on Friday, which is what we call Good Friday. And Good Friday is the day that Jesus was buried. Think about it, do some math, right? He was buried for three days, which means he was in the ground on Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday was the third day. And on the third day, what happens is Jesus rises. So in the story, what happens is these women come to Jesus's tomb just to sort of pay respects to him. But when they come, the stone has been rolled away and there's an angel that tells them that Jesus has risen from the dead. And so what happens after that is that then because Jesus has risen, right? He was dead, but now he is alive again. We call this his resurrection. I don't know if you've ever heard that word, but it just means kind of bring someone back from the dead. So after Jesus is brought back from the dead, he stays on earth and he lives on earth for a little bit longer. He stays for 40 more days. And then after that, after he's risen from the dead, he ascends into heaven. So that is what we call the ascension. Now I know this might not make a lot of sense. It might just seem like some normal story or maybe even some of you might think it seems like a fairy tale, but Coach Kirsten is gonna explain the significance of this to you guys. Love you and hope you have a great Easter. You may be wondering, why did all that have to happen to Jesus? Why did he have to suffer and die on the cross? And the reason is to save us from our sins. I'm gonna read you a verse. It's from Romans 3, 23, and it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So because we have sinned, we deserve death. We don't deserve to live with Jesus in heaven, but Jesus died on the cross so that we can live in heaven. He loved us so much that even while we were sinners, he died for us. When Jesus died on the cross, he carried all of our sins with him so that we can go into heaven. Jesus gave us this amazing gift of eternal life. In order to receive this gift, we have to confess to God that we have sinned and that we need him. We need to believe that he lived on earth and he died on the cross and he rose again three days later to save us from our sins. And we need to accept him into our lives. An easy way to remember this is that it's the ABCs backwards. So you got C for confess, B for believe and A for accept. And that is why Easter is the most important story in the Bible because it's the story of how Christ conquered death and it's the story of Christ's power and it's the story of how we can receive eternal life because of what Christ did for us. If you have any questions or comments or you just want to talk about the Easter story or anything, feel free to text or call me or Coach Olivia. We'd love to talk to you. We are bored just like I'm sure you guys are bored, so go ahead and give us a call or a text. Now that you guys have heard the entire Easter story, you can complete the next Kahoot. I will give you the link on the team app, and I hope to see a lot of you do it this week. Now here is Coach Olivia again to share something very exciting that she did with Miss Danielle. Hope you guys enjoy. Hey girls, I just wanted to introduce the next video that you guys are gonna see. It's just about a four minute song and it's called I'm Gonna See a Victory. And it's a really great reminder that even when things get hard in life, in the end, God always ends up on top, just like he did in the Easter story. God, I serve knows only how to try it. 
So that's all for this week's video. I hope you guys complete the challenges of Kahoot Game and helping out around the house like Coach Clarissa challenged you guys to do. I love you all. I miss you so much. I hope we can get back together soon, but just stay strong. Keep praying, keep praying for each other. All of us coaches are praying for you to be safe and also to have peace. And I hope you all have a great Easter. See you next week. <laughs> Jeremiah 32 17. 32. Then God can do anything. Woo! If it's in his will. Gang, gang. PSA though. I didn't trust him. Why? What's it called? Uh, a hamper. It's a hamper. I'm going to put all my darks in. Oh wait, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. No, that's not how I do it. I'm sorry, I lied. Oh, man. Really quickly, I'll be back.